Good morning. So, uh, one of my other videos you saw where I wired up the 700R4, and I put about four or five, probably 450 miles on it since doing that, and I had talked about putting in the vacuum switch. So I intend to do that today. I'm going to show you how I'm going to wire that up. It should be a whole lot easier than the last one. But been working on it, and let me show you something I changed inside. Because after driving this for a while, I became very annoyed with having to reach way up under my dash to get to a switch down here. So you can see this switch that I currently have. I have that actually wired into my starter so that the truck will not turn over unless that switch is pulled forward. Just a little security thing, I guess. It's kind of cool. But even with the key and the ignition, if that switch is not turned on, turn the key all the way, it won't start. But the problem I was having is my torque converter lockout switch was right beside it and running around and getting ready to pass somebody you had to reach up turn the switch off then when you're done turn it back on not a big thing but it was kind of annoying when you drive you sit closer to the door and you have to reach way over so what I did I pulled that switch down here and just mounted it to the side of my uh, shifter my shifter bezel here so that's been pretty cool um, one thing I want to do this time too I'm going to wire up the vacuum switch I was talking about and I'll set that and I'll show you how I do all that but I'm going to put a uh, bulb right here in the dash so that I will know when it's engaged when the torque converter lockup is engaged or not uh, another one off of Amazon actually it's just like this one here I bought for the headlights you can see one of my other videos I think this one's just green and says overdrive so we'll get to that so a couple items I'll be using today that I had to purchase. One is the vacuum switch, of course. To add a vacuum switch, you have to have one. Uh, bought this. Wasn't very expensive. $30 or $40, I think. And I paid a little extra for this one. Because this one is fully adjustable. And the way you adjust it is with an Allen key. Right there in the center. I'm trying to get it to focus. But right in the center of this you can run that in or out to adjust where this switch engages and just like the brake switch you saw me install you have a normally open normally closed and I'll show you how I set all this and wire this up the other thing I purchased was the light bulb so my intent is to run a wire inside and this will come on you can kinda of see it overdrive it'll come on when the torque converter locks up the way I'm gonna figure out where to set it based on vacuum is I have this brake bleeder self or uh, brake bleeder I bought from Harbor Freight 100 years ago but it has a nice vacuum gauge on it so I'm hoping to find a port on the intake or the carburetor where I can hook this up start the truck figure out where my vacuum normally runs and I know it won't be under load unless I put it inside and drive around but it will give me a good start of figuring out where I want to set this switch up for engaging and disengaging so let's see if we can find somewhere on the manifold or the carburetor to hook this up to we'll start the truck and see what the vacuum normally runs give it some uh, gas even though it's not under load and see if we lose vacuum that'll tell us everything that we need to know for hooking this switch up all right found a port on the manifold that i wanted to use uh, originally i was going to use this one off the front of the carburetor with the vacuum hose and the screw in it that one on the back I'm not sure if I can show you or not. I like better. Actually, if you see that hose that goes down, it goes down to a vacuum port off the back of the manifold. Normally get better vacuum, controlled vacuum off the manifold than you do the carburetor. So, got me a piece of tubing hooked to it. Comes over here to my Harbor Freight brake bleeder vacuum gauge. So, hopefully this truck will fire right up. And we'll see how much vacuum we have sitting idle. I think that'll work out well for a good port and we'll get to the bench and set the vacuum switch up and pick a number for it to engage and disengage so vacuum switch on the bench here I have it hooked up to my multimeter just in ohm so when the switch closes it will ohm out 
and that'll tell me where my vacuum is set. So, hook back to my vacuum pump here. And it comes on at 10. So let's see, let me do that again. It comes on at 10, let's see where it goes off. Goes off around eight. Okay, so manifold pressure is at ten. Switch will be on. Torque converter locked up. It goes off at let's try eight. So when it gets below eight inches water column, it'll go off. The only problem I see with that having such a tight on off of two inches of water column is it may cycle in and out a lot. <clears throat> It may take some adjustment. I may end up having to put a time delay on it and give it seven or eight seconds before it will actually lock on once it's reached manifold pressure. But we'll get this wired up and try it. Um, like I said before, I didn't have to adjust this one. This one actually came at 10 and 8. But if I needed to adjust it, there is a set screw inside of there that you just take an Allen wrench and run it in or out to move your settings around. This is an easy way on the bench to figure out where it's going to go on and off and hopefully get it sort of set up before you get it on the truck. It'd be a whole lot harder if it were at 15 or 16 inches water column on the truck and trying to drive around and figure all that out. So we'll get this in wired up, get my switch wired up, and see what happens. Well, we got everything wired up. Got my vacuum line going back to the back of the manifold. Comes over here. I just mounted the switch, zip tied it to the speedometer cable. I wanted to leave it somewhere I could adjust it. I'll permanently mount it somewhere more solid later. But the wire coming from the switch, then the brake pedal, and then it comes up here. You can see it is broken at this switch. It would be this wire. The other wire goes down to the torque converter. And I have a stake on over here that goes back to the switch I just put in the dash. So we come in here and look. And just a little button um, light right there. So if all goes well, I should be able to start this truck. I won't have that light come on until, the, uh, until it gets vacuum on it. So let's see what happens with it. That should work nicely. I haven't driven it around yet. I'm uh, going to take it down the road here in a few and see what it does. See if I have to make any adjustments to it. But it should be a good fix for my torque converter uh, unlocking when I need it to just going down the road and lose this vacuum. So we'll see how this goes. I'm assuming all will be well. It will, like everything, it will take a few final adjustments. But that's the short and the long of it. Y'all be good. Thanks for watching.